15 years ago, the Maserati was all but dead and buried. But then a Ferrari got involved. Since when, Maserati has steadily grown into a company that sells between five and 6,000 cars a year. But in three years' time, they reckon they will sell 50,000 cars a year. That is a tenfold increase of sales in three years. And that plan starts right here with this car, the all new Quattroporte. How are they gonna do it? One word, China. The Chinese market loves huge, big, luxurious four-door cars. And you can't get a bigger, more luxurious four-door car than the new Quattroporte. And although it looks remarkably like the car that they made nine years ago, it's actually brand new from the wheel nuts up. New chassis, new engines, new gearbox, everything is new. As is the way of the world nowadays, both the new engines are turbocharged. There's a V6 and there's a V8. This one's the V8, you can't get the V6 for another six months. And on paper, it's a monster of an engine. It has 523 horsepower, 479 pounds-feet of torque, which rises to 523 pounds-feet of torque on overboost, which is available at any time between two and 4,000 RPM. And even though the Quattroporte weighs the very thick end of two tonnes, that kind of poke in any car gives thundering performance. 4.7 to 60 this thing is capable of doing. And get this, the top speed is 191 miles per hour. That makes it the fastest four-door production car in the world. But what's it like on the move, the new Quattroporte? It's a little bit of a mixed bag, actually. Performance-wise, it's, it's just a monster. It really is outrageously fast. One of the things that does make the Quattroporte unique is this dual personality. You can press M and then press Sport. Use the paddles to downshift or upshift. The suspension firms up, the gear changes get quicker, the throttle response gets keener, and all of a sudden you think you're in some kind of an M5 rival. It, it really is that, that potent, that kind of energetic as a, as a personality, if and when you press all the right buttons. And you've got to love it for that. I mean, this car handles properly. You can throw it around as if it was something that weighed 1,500 kilograms especially if you turn the traction control off. Although, really, do you ever want to turn the traction control off and start going sideways <laughs> in a limousine through the middle of Beijing? Um, mm. But that's a Maserati for you, they say. Because they know that this car is aimed so squarely at the Chinese market, they've made it a lot longer, not just to give a bigger boot, but also to give a lot more rear seat space. But it is a little bit plain and simple and um, not entirely expensive feeling back here. Let's see what it's like on the move. Hmm, first thing you notice is that there is a lot of road noise for a limousine. There's also quite a lot of throb from the exhaust, which is great if you're an enthusiast, but maybe not so much if you're a diplomat that just wants to chill out in the back seats. Also, the ride isn't good, it's lively, it's noisy. So overall, it's a very good car, the Quattroporte. A very good platform from which to build towards that intended plan of selling 50,000 cars a year by 2013. But before we declare it the new class champion, I think we should compare it, well, with um, the current class champion. The current best in class, of course, is the Jaguar XJ. Not necessarily this particular version, which is the full house V8 supercharged long wheelbase one that costs 95 grand. But that still makes it 15,000 pounds cheaper than the Maserati. And do you know what? I'm not sure the Maserati feels 15 grand better than this car. In fact, whisper this to Maserati, I'm not sure it feels like a better car full stop. There are all sorts of reasons why, not just the price, 
The Jaguar feels every bit as quick as the Mazda. It feels every bit as agile on the road. I actually think I prefer its steering. But by far and away more important than any of that is the Jaguar's ride. It rides properly, like a proper limo should. The Maserati doesn't, and I think they've made a bit of a mistake with it from that point of view. The Maserati just feels too sporting, even in isolation, but when you put it against this, which just wafts along the road beautifully, I don't know, the quadruporter even feels, start to feel slightly neurotic. So, overall conclusion, Maserati, great car, but not quite as good as it gets. Not yet, anyway.